if you want to get good at coding in R, you have to practice, right? In this video, we're going to practice using ggplot to create the plot that I've got beneath me at the moment. I want you to try and replicate what it is that I'm doing at home on your computer. It is the best way to learn. I'm using data sets in these videos that you've got access to at home. In this case, it's the msleep data set. So if you push view msleep like that, boom shakalaka, there's the data set. You've got this at home. You can replicate everything that I'm doing. I'm also going to provide a card at the end of the video that will take you to a PDF. That PDF will give you all of this code as well. Okay, so let's do this. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. So let's start by having a look at the data set that we're trying to make the plot from. Uh, this is the M sleep data set. It's all about mammals and the extent to which they sleep, right? So we've got all of our mammals here, cheetahs, cows, etc., etc. We've got a couple of variables that categories or factor variables. This is the one we're interested in for this particular video. It's the order. So carnivores and primates and rodents, etc., etc. These are all sort of Latin names. I don't know them. But anyway, there's 19 orders. So there's a lot. I mean, this is quite a large data set, but all of these mammals can be categorized into an order. And we've also got total sleep. And so you can imagine that if we grouped all of our primates together and we took all of their total sleeps, we could work out an average sleep, for example, and we could do that for each of these orders, if that makes sense. Okay, and we're gonna use that fact in producing this particular plot. Now, before we look at the code, let's take a closer look at the plot itself so that we know where it is that we're going, right? What we've got is on the x-axis, we've got all of those, the orders, this, you know, the order of primates, right? So we've got, uh, you know, carnivores and um, et cetera, et cetera. That's not the order of primates, the order of mammals, right? Those are the categories. Then on the x-axis, I've got their hours, but actually that's total sleep. That's taken from the total sleep variable. Then these colored dots, these are the average sleep time for that particular order, right? So any particular order has got an average. We've created a little dot there. The horizontal line is the average sleep for all mammals. Then those little vertical lines to basically join. It shows you how far away the average sleep for that order of mammal is from the average for all mammals. Okay, and we call this a lollipop graph. There might be other names for it. I call it a lollipop graph. Okay, it really is a kind of a nice visual. The other thing that's important about this plot is what we've done is we've taken the order of mammals and we've ordered them from left to right in terms of the magnitude of their average sleep so that the plot looks nice, okay? And so that we can visually see the relationship of average sleep um, across the different mammal orders, okay? So let's have a look at the code. I'm assuming that you're familiar with the tidyverse. If you're not, you're really not gonna manage to make much sense of the rest of this video. You might need to go back and watch other videos in which I describe how the tidyverse works, but we call the tidyverse set of libraries, which includes ggplot and, uh, and others that we're gonna use. Four cats, I think, is now included in the more recent versions of Tidyverse. I'm not sure if it is or isn't. It is part of the Tidyverse ecosystem. So Forecats is a package that helps us work with categorical variables and it works nicely with all of the Tidyverse packages. I've just called this separately, uh, but it may well be included in more recent versions of Tidyverse. View sleep, we've already looked at the sleep. Now let's have a look at the code itself. This first bit of code is reasonably straightforward. We are grouping by the variable order, then we're creating a summary and that summary is using a new variable that we're creating called mean sleep, the average sleep. And what is it? It's the average sleep. Mean sleep is equal to the mean of total sleep for each of the categories. Okay, so because we've ordered by this category order. So for each order, for each of the mammal orders, we will have an average sleep that'll be associated with this new variable called mean sleep. And that'll be in a table that we've now created with the summary function. And if I put in a view here, it'll just show you that table. Boom shakalaka, there it is. And we can see that for all 19 orders, we've got an average sleep. All right, let's take away the view. Now, we said we wanted these to be in order from left to right in terms of the magnitude of the average sleep. So we use this factor reorder function that comes with the forecats package. And we're gonna use a mutate. You could create a new variable, but we're not going to. We're going to just replace the existing variable called order with one called order. So it's, we mutate to replace order with order. Order is equal to factory order. We're going to use order, the data from order. It's a little bit unfortunate that we're talking about ordering the variables and the variable name that we're talking about is called order. So please don't get confused about that. It's the variable name here where we see the word order that we are ordering 
okay, and we're gonna order them by mean sleep. Okay, and mean sleep is this, this variable that we've just created in our summary table, um, which is the average sleep. Now, just to let you know, when we do this, when we use factor reorder, you would expect it when you produce the table, you don't really need to produce the table, but I'm just telling you that if we produce this table now, let's do it and I'll show you what I mean. We've reordered the variable and if I put in view, you're gonna notice that the variables haven't changed the way they are arranged. And this is just quite an important thing to remember. If you want to change the way they're arranged, in other words, you want to see them in a table going from largest to smallest or smallest to largest, you use the arrange function. This factory order changes the level associated. So it's like the metadata. It gives us sort of a, a numeric value associated with the level of each particular um, factor. Okay. That becomes important with respect to data visualization. So when we use ggplot, ggplot is gonna look at that factor level in terms of where it is that it positions things from left to right. Okay, I just that can be confusing. I got a bit confused by that, but in actual fact, just make it a distinction between the order, which is the factor level, which is in the metadata associated with the variable, as opposed to a range. These are two different things. We don't need to arrange this, it doesn't matter. ggplot will do it for us when we create the plot. Right, let's jump right in to creating our plot. We're starting off with ggplot. Now, I've got this blue line over here that's just saying what we're doing next. Remember, we're piping this data object that we've created here, right, msleep piped into group by blah, blah, blah. We're piping that straight into ggplot, so we don't need to tell ggplot what data to use. It knows that we're piping in a data set. When you pipe something in, it assumes that the first argument in your function is the data object that you're piping in. So we don't need to say data equals anything. We do need to define the aesthetics, right? So we're saying ggplot the aesthetics, the x-axis is the order, right? These, the order of primate. And the y-axis now is mean sleep. And so if I were to create that plot, just like that, boom shakalaka, it's basically just created a canvas, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, and I think earlier in the video I said that the y-axis was total sleep, it's not. Y-axis is the mean sleep for each of these things. We're gonna add in our plus there, which is basically when you're using ggplot, you use a plus, not a pipe operator, remember, a plus to add in additional layers and aesthetics um, to your plot. So our first step is we've created a canvas with nothing on it. We're adding in a plus here. Now, usually at this stage, uh, I would actually create the plots. But in this particular case, what I'm gonna do is start with creating some of the labels and some of the background before we create the plot. It just, it's gonna help you kind of see this thing emerge. And so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm adding in um, the title, you know, sleep time of mammals, X equals inverted commas, open and close inverted commas. In other words, we're not gonna, that just means we're not gonna have a label at the bottom. Y is hours. And so we could change that to average sleeping time, but we'll leave it as hours. It is hours, it's measured in hours. Theme, now, you can see on the screen at the moment, all of the names of the different orders of mammals are all kind of stacked on top of each other, right? So I'm saying theme axis.text.x. So the x axis text, element text. So we, this is just a way of we're wanting to look at the text. Angle is 45 degrees. Now the V adjust and H adjust are vertical and horizontal adjustments. And that's just to make sure that it all lands up neatly. And you'll see exactly what I mean when I run this code, it's gonna land up nice and neatly in the right place. Axis text Y, and here we're just gonna say I want it to be bold. And we've already said that the axis text Y is gonna be the word hours, so I'm just saying like make that. That's gonna be these tick marks, 5, 10, 15, 20, right? Plot's title is equal to element text. Horizontal adjust 0.5 means it's gonna put it in the middle. So if it was 0.5 is half, it's gonna be halfway along from left to right. Size 25, make it nice and big and make it bold. Okay, so if we run that, I'm gonna take away the plus just so that it runs it up until that point. Okay, so now we've got, um, just as expected, you can see the ticks, the 5, 10, 15 have gone bold. And there you can see the 45 degree angles lets us read the various names there. I just wanna show you if I um, changed this vertical and horizontal adjustment to zero, you'll see how it doesn't put it in the right place. It sticks it in the wrong place and so what you want is a one there. And that's gonna put it exactly where we want it. Okay, um, now let's add our plus here because we're gonna keep going. The next thing I'm gonna do before we produce our plot is just get all the colors right, okay. And again, we're using the theme function and axis text X, 
element text color equals blue, right? And I'm going to read this entire thing to you. You can look at it in your own time, but plot title, light blue. Um, the panel background uh, element rectangle, it produces a rectangle fill equals black and plot background is also black. The plot background is the stuff that's gray at the moment. And the panel background is what is behind what says sleep time of mammals and hours and all of the labels, that's the panel, right? So they're both gonna be black. Um, we've taken away our grid lines and I've said legend position equals none. In other words, I don't want a legend on the right-hand side of the plot. And if we take away the plus and run the code up until there, boom shakalaka, now we've got a nice canvas onto which we can paint our picture. Okay, let's keep going. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the lines and I'm gonna do them before I do the geom points. And I'm gonna show you why in just a second, right? Let's draw the lines and then I'll walk you through the code. So we've got two things that we've done here in sort of they're two separate steps, but I'll walk you through the whole thing. In the middle, we've got a horizontal line, which is the average sleep for all mammals, right? And we're drawing a line on the thing. So let's, let's look at the code up here. This is how we draw the line and we've got GM H line, horizontal, that stands for horizontal line. If you're drawing a horizontal line, really in terms of being able to draw the line, the only thing you need to do is to define the Y intercept. Define the Y intercept and you're drawing a horizontal line, boom shakalaka, you've got a line. You can then add other aesthetics like the color and the size, which is what we've done here. To define the Y intercept, we've just simply said mean of sleep total of the M sleep data set. Okay, so Y intercept is equal to mean sleep total it could mean of M sleep dollar sign sleep total. All right, so that's given us the Y intercept. Then I've said make it light blue and make it size one. So it's a little bit bigger than it might have otherwise been. Then plus, now here are our little segments. When you do these segments, each of these segments have got two things you have to define, a start point and an end point, right? So we've got a start point X and Y and X end and X Y for the end point of the line, okay? So this is not complicated, it's reasonably straightforward. The starting point is order. So it's the value of order. So for any one of these particular observations, if you take the first one, the start point of the line is gonna be in line with that particular order. And in actual fact, that's gonna be the X coordinate for the end point as well, because we're just going up and down along the same sort of X axis point. The Y starting point is the mean of M sleep, sleep total. So it's gonna start at the same place that we defined our horizontal line earlier, right? So we're starting at the horizontal line and we're gonna end, the X end is still order, we haven't moved along the X axis at all, right? The Y end, okay, is gonna be down here, which is where we're gonna be putting our little blob in a few seconds time. And that's gonna be the mean sleep for that particular observation or that particular order, right? The reason I've drawn these horizontal lines first and not put in the little color blobs is the color blobs okay, which is a sort of a GM point, I've made them a little bit big. And if I put them first, this line would go to the center of that GM point and would overlap it and it would look a little bit funny. Okay, so when I put the blobs, you're gonna see exactly why that this makes it much neater. Okay, so let's put a plus and we're gonna keep going. All right, now comes our GM point, right? Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm gonna run it and then walk you through the code. Okay, GM point is gonna put a little dot and um, the aesthetic is gonna be color equals mean sleep. Basically, I'm saying I want the color to be mapped against the value of mean sleep, right? And I'm gonna tell you in a second how it's gonna do that map and size equals five. Now, it's because I've wanted them to be nice and big. Now, can you see, if you look at these blobs, these points that are now nice and big because their color equals five, the line that has come down that we made just now, that segment, would ordinarily go all the way to the middle of that geom point and it would look a bit odd. But because we've layered it first, the segment, then the blob, um, it gives a nice sort of lollipop effect, okay? You got that? If we made this even bigger, it still wouldn't matter because as it expanded, it would just overlap and hide that little bit of the segment. So it makes it quite neat. Now, scale color gradient, um, basically it, it sounds like we're having a gradient of colors starting at, in this case, hot pink and ending on yellow. It'll produce a scale color all the way in between those two. I said hot pink and yellow, it's quite nice against a black background. Okay, and so that's our geom point, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Next, we're gonna add the annotation and I'm just gonna run that and then talk you through the code that's needed to get there. 
Right, so the, we said the, the function is annotate. So we've got a, just a plus sign here, and this is how ggplot works. You put a plus sign and it adds another layer. The function is annotate. We're annotating, we're popping in some text here. Now, it's gonna put in some text, but we need to tell it where to put the text, right? And again, you've got an X and a Y coordinate, right? So we're saying X is four. So you'll see if you counted one, two, three, four of these observations and go up, you can see that's where the text is starting. So that we're saying X is four, Y is equal to, and now this is just to illustrate that you don't have to put a number. You can actually put some sort of uh, coding to determine where it puts the Y. You could do that for, with any of these things. And I've said maximum sleep total minus four. So, you know, the maximum minus four that puts us at about, yeah, so 20 minus four puts us at about there. And then, okay, now this is also important. Label equals average sleep, this little downward slash, people say up, uh, forward or backslash. I kind of think if you're going from left to right, downward makes more sense. Downward slash N means new line for all mammals. So you can see we've got this over two lines, average sleep for all mammals, the downward slash N, it tells it to go onto the next line. Color equals, I just cho chose kind of a neutral color, size equals four, make it bold. H adjust equals naught means where we've defined, that's horizontal adjustment, right? Left and right. And we've said equals naught because we've said X equals four, we want it to start at that point. In other words, the horizontal adjustment starts from where that four is and then writes the text after that. Okay, so that's gonna produce the average sleep for all mammals as a text annotation. Okay, let's add a plus and we're gonna add in our arrow next. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add in our arrow. I'm gonna run the code and then I'll walk you through it. There's our nice, beautiful little arrow. And here, very similar, the, the same sort of principles apply. X equals 3.7, right? So for the beginning of our text, we said X equals four. So I wanted the arrow to start slightly to the left of that, so 3.7. Y is equal to maximum sleep total minus five, right? So we said that the text was gonna start at minus four. I wanted the arrow to start at minus five, so down uh, a little bit further. So remember, we're creating a curve here. And so once again, we've got that X and Y that I've just described represents the beginning of the arrow X. So, you know, that X equals 3.7 and Y equals maximum sleep minus five. It's the beginning of the arrow. Where's the arrow gonna end? Well, uh, along the X axis, it's gonna be 1.5. So I wanted it to land up somewhere in between two of these vertical lines so that it didn't feel as if we were pointing to a particular observation. So I said 1.5. Y is equal to, and this is our little formula that gives you the horizontal line, uh, the mean, of uh, M sleep equals sleep total. All right, so that just tells you the beginning and the end of the arrow. Then we've given the arrow a color. We've given it a curvature. 0.5 is kind of nice. If you made that bigger, it would be kind of a, more of a curve. And I can actually show you, let's make that 0.8 and watch what happens to the curve when I do that. It makes it slightly, it's a little bit odd. I think 0.5 actually is nicer. Size is 0.5, that's just how thin it is. We could make it thicker by making it one or two, et cetera, et cetera, but that seems to work. Then the arrow, you can define the arrow. We've said the arrow length is equal to, you know, 0 0.07. We can make that a bigger or smaller arrow and open. If we made that closed, it would make, let me show you what I mean. Closed, and it makes it a closed arrow like that. But I think open is nicer. Now, on the screen at the moment, what you're gonna see is a little, a card that you can click on and that'll give you a PDF of all of this code that you can use to go through it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope that was helpful. Don't ever change, don't do drugs, always do your best. See you next time. We're gonna do more of these practice videos. Boom shakalaka.